Can we go too far with dissonance? Have I gone too far with my recent ambient sketch number 48? Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome to a new lesson, today I want to talk about dissonance because it's one of my favorite parameters in music and it's kind of been a goal of mine to incorporate more dissonance inside of my ambient sketches since last year because I think that the genre of ambient guitar could benefit from more kinds of intervals and dissonance because from what I hear right now it's comprised of very consonant intervals and chords, just like this. And while this sounds fine and totally great and legit, we could do so much more in the genre of ambient guitar. So that's why it is a goal of mine to incorporate more dissonance. But now the problem is that if we want to incorporate dissonance, we have to deal with a great dose of stretches also. And I'm not incorporating dissonance just for the sake of it. I have a clear approach. My goal is to translate my melodies into chords. And the problem is that melodies are often made of very close notes, half steps or whole steps. This is an example of a typical melody. You see all the notes I play are very close together and it makes a great melody. It's very rare that a melody jumps a lot all over the place. This is not a good melody in the proper sense of it. So if we want to translate our melodies into chords, it means that we want the notes of our melody to ring as long as possible, so we have to find shapes that are going to let the notes of our melody ring. And I've brought this concept maybe a little bit too far sometimes, uh, especially on my covers of video game music. So let's say that I want to let the notes of my melody ring, and this is my melody. I would have to play something very stretchy like this. And this is beautiful, but it is not really playable in many situations. So we have to make a compromise between stretches, dissonance, and melodies and bring all of this together. I want to analyze with you my recent sketch from last Monday, ambient sketch number 48, because there is a great dose of dissonance inside it and I want to walk you through my thought process on how I made it work as far as the balance between stretches, dissonance and melody. The initial key of my song was F minor and I wanted to include that melody. So I had to find ways to let the notes ring as long as possible and to find shapes for it to work and it ended up sounding like this. Something like this. So it is not a playable chord, it's beautiful. But it's not playable in a musical context, so I had to change some things. And when you want to deal with dissonance, stretches and melody, most of the times you have to find the perfect 
key so you can take advantage of open strings to reduce the amount of stretches in your song. So I had to change my song in the key of D minor so it was more playable and it ended up sounding like this. It's kind of stretchy but it's nothing compared to the chord like we seen previously. So it's just this shape of a minor 11 and this shape. And when I think about it, I could have played even easier with the open D string on the fourth string. I'm gonna play it with tabs on top, both versions, so you can try to play it for yourself and see how it's playable for you. So I think I succeeded to translate my melody into something that rang a lot longer, this melody. When I play it like this, the, the notes are ringing only when I fret the note and after they disappear. But now let's listen to the whole progression and tell me if you hear something wrong in this. Did you hear it? On the second chord of my progression, there's a humongous dose of dissonance in it and it's almost too much, but I find that it works in this context. So out of the blue, if I take the intervals that are in this chord, we have this. Wow, this is very, very dissonance. This is the same thing as playing at B flat. B natural and C in the same chord. But what happens when we play a melody that's, that is repetitive on top is that we can pass almost any bass note under it and it's going to work. So in that case, we have heard the melody on top of our D minor chord and we made sense of that melody. A kind of Dorian kind of feel. And when we play the B flat, it still makes sense because we heard that melody twice before. But it could be a matter of taste. Maybe you don't like the sound of it and that's okay. But the more you play with dissonance, the more you get a taste for it. And when I wrote my song, I didn't hear anything wrong until I was almost finished recording the song and I told myself, oh, is, th is this too much? And I opted to just let it in and discuss with you, is this too much dissonance for you or it is okay for you to have that amount of dissonance inside of a chord like dissimulated inside the chord. I want the discussion to be open. So just to recap, when you want to add more dissonance inside of your chords, you have to find a great balance and a great compromise between stretches, dissonance and melody. And I really uh, encourage you to find ways to let your melodies ring more by finding chord shapes according to your melody. At least it's something that I'm striving for and it's part of my style. Thanks for watching my lesson. I'd really like you to open the discussion in the comment section. Is that progression too dissonant for you or are your ears already uh, accustomed to that kind of dissonant sound? Do you like it or not? Write it in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, au revoir.